weakness, despair, failure. The path to one's dreams is one paved by the blood of the fallen and the tears of the broken. So achieve one's desires, one must first know pain, one must endure it. For only when you know the severity of despair can you find the will to overcome it. And as a hero, only when you know the darkness can you save those caught within its grasp. There's one moment in particular that nudged him down the journey of a traditional hero. It was the moment Deku was told he was never going to become a hero. Caught between hope and despair, it was a moment that was intentionally made for the purposes of connecting with the audience. It succeeded, but that moment had a different connotation. There is nothing more painful than being powerless against the ways of the world, as even if you have the will and the desire to fight for what you believe in, Sometimes you don't even get the chance to step into the ring. Whether you win or you fail, it all depends on the will of the game and not the will of the player. In My Hero Academia, the game was rigged from the moment Crux was created. Deku had the will to take action to reach his goal but did not have the power to overcome that invisible barrier. To live for the sake of a dream that will never become reality is heartbreaking, especially knowing it might not be achieved. Deku resolved to attend UA even before he was given All Might's power. He wanted to become a hero, even knowing he had no power, no strength. How could he become a hero that will save people with a smile when he himself was weak? Weightlifters spend hours in the gym, lost in grueling training sessions because they know that pain will make them stronger. Athletes run for hours on end because they know it will make them faster. To be a hero was not a choice of vanity but one of desire, of purpose. It was the only future he knew to be true and on that path he walked and on that path he suffered and fell. Perhaps there's a beauty to be found in taking action even if the possibility of success is zero. In the end, we only regret the chances we don't take. And only when you move forward toward what you desire the most can you keep your dream alive, even when there's a small chance of success. And it's here that My Hero Academia approaches a mechanic of its world that many seem to overlook. Fate. What is meant to be will always find its way. And to call Deku's encounter with All Might's pure luck would be a misconception. Their connection isn't more obvious than through one for all, the power they share. Its origins harken back to the first user, a seemingly quirkless younger brother of All for One, who, after being given a quirk by All for One, merged it with his own and then passed it on. The quirk was passed on from user to user, and each user shared a trait that connected them to the other. The strong sense of justice that they possessed is a staple of the hero archetype, but as far as we know, this wasn't the only thread which tied them to one another. The first user was Quirkless, All Might was Quirkless, and Deku the same. One for All is the power of inherited will. It evens the playing field in a world where no men are created equal. It wasn't by luck or chance, it was the ties of fate which bound them to one another. Fate is knowing who you are, it is choosing who you want to be and not letting anyone tell you who or what to become. Deku wanted to become a hero. He knew, perhaps more than most, the sacrifices it would take for that dream to become a reality. But in not knowing the true extent of his own weakness, failure was inevitable. In order to make up for that weakness, Deku frequently sacrificed himself in attempts to use All Might's power. He resolved to prevail and become a hero even if it meant breaking every bone in his body. If you don't sacrifice for what you want, what you want will become the sacrifice. He wanted to protect his dream because the pain of failing at reaching one's dreams was far worse than the pain of broken bones. Sacrifice was also a proponent of the hero archetype. Those who sacrificed themselves to save others were worthy of being heroes, right? Though he once thought so, sacrifice wasn't going to suffice in fixing the long-term problem, one that seemed more and more prevalent, his weakness. But to be truly number one, one needs a different set of standards with which to abide by. Perhaps there's something insidious in the desire to sacrifice at the expense of your own life. One's life might appear to be a big price to pay, but for one's dream, if it takes over every aspect of their lives, it becomes far more important than life itself that nothing else matters. 
Life is of no consequence to the dreams that give it meaning. And to explore Deku's character, I would like to go back to an important moment in the narrative, his fight with Todoroki. While heroes would sacrifice their lives to save others, here Deku was willing to sacrifice something far more important to pull his rival out of his despair. He knew what he was doing when he gave Todoroki the will to overcome his inner struggle. And he did so even if it meant he would lose. He did so knowing the outcome. The importance of the tournament was emphasized for the bulk of the arc. And when Deku opened Todoroki's eyes to the reality of his place in the world, he risked his own dreams of becoming the number one hero. <laughs> Dreams can be sacrificed, dreams can be protected, but neither approach means anything if one loses themselves in the process. For a hero, it's one thing to sacrifice your own life, but it's something else entirely to sacrifice the very thing that gives your life meaning. Deku lives not in service of his dreams, but in spite of them, blazing a trail that while conforming to the traditional thematics of his genre, it also goes against the desire for victory and status paved by the unrealistic standards of his world. His fight with Todoroki was interesting in particular, not because of what it did, but because of what it followed. Deku's first match in the final round was with Shinso, who was also disillusioned by his place in the world. While he had a quirk, it was not flashy nor particularly strong. In fact, it was villainous by design, allowing its user to control the actions of his target. In traditional storytelling, the idea of control is often conveyed as treacherous. Iconic villains in history such as Lex Luthor are known for their destructive need for control, which is why they stand against the hero. Luthor saw himself as a god, able to bend the world to his will using his vast riches and his superior intellect. His hatred for Superman stems from his inferiority complex, knowing the power he possesses could not hold a candle to the true power that Superman wields. Superman could wipe out the entire planet on a whim if he desired, and whether Luther liked it or not, he was as Superman's mercy. The fact that Luther's power was feared and disdained, while Superman's was admired and worshipped, only exasperated that hatred, as God is only as powerful as the followers who put him on that pedestal. Control is a staple of traditional hero-villain storytelling. Because of this, we've been conditioned to make the assertion that those who possess control over others are wrong for doing so, justifying our hatred even regardless of any context afforded to the story being told. Deku was in the wrong too. He had only thought of what his life without a quirk affected him, but there were those who had quirks who had similar if not worse struggles to contend with. Shinso wanted to become a hero, but had a villainous power he wasn't the only one. Even though many talented students wanted to become heroes, they were destined to fail because the standardized tests at UA only made entry easier for those with more destructive power. But espionage tactics had their merit, especially since destructive power was counterintuitive and a hero's desire to save bystanders from the wreckage that could be caused by Bakugo's explosions or Todoroki's fire. It was a flaw in the system that paid no regard for the dreams of those with diverse quirks. It wasn't just Deku that suffered from the system, there were also those who had dreams of becoming heroes but couldn't do so under the current restrictions. His new understanding led to new perspectives in his fight with Todoroki. Todoroki had a strong quirk, maybe the strongest, but that wasn't enough for him to become the number one hero. Those weaker than him were giving it everything to succeed, while he, while stronger, lacked the drive to push himself toward his dreams. The will to try and succeed supersedes talent, and without strength of conviction, then how could he become number one? Strength alone isn't enough. Deku understood this. Deku lit a fire into Rookie's heart and blazed a trail for him that would make him a better hero. He protected his rival's dream by pushing him down the path that would lead him to his desires, instead of one that would have led to his destruction. Living by All Might's strong moral campus, Deku's values and personal beliefs give him the resolve to endure risk in order to adhere to those principles. 
by conceiving of heroism as a universal attribute of human nature and not as a rare feature of the few heroically inclined, heroism becomes something that seems in the range of possibilities for every person and such is the message that Deco's actions have sent. Power doesn't define the hero, it's the hero that defines his power. Deku not only protects his own dream by fighting to prove he deserves the right to own the power that's been given to him, but he protects the dreams of others by letting them see their own worth from outside their own way. To shield your fears and guard your own beliefs in the midst of adversity, that's what it means to be a hero. That's what it means to protect a dream. Thank you for watching yet another video. This one was brought to you by my subscribers and if you'd like to join the outcast, click on that subscribe button and share this video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.